Good afternoon, friends and fans. Bob's Barn Workshop. We're on our way to the barn. Just going to show you a little bit of what was going on here, though. Yeah. What was it that Cousin Eddie said? The shitter was full? We had to have the septic tank dug up. New lid kind of put on it. So that's the results of that. So we're off to the barn. I started a new project. Now you saw that project a couple weeks ago where I uh, we did that bedroom. Stripped the wallpaper, painted the walls, put the new closet doors in, did some electrical wiring for you. Well, we've decided that we want to put a Murphy bed in there. So I bought a Rockler Murphy bed, bed kit. You'll see the instruction page here. I'm wondering if it's an AD506447. You think that's the part number? Anyway, so it's basically just a big plywood box. And it's cold in here. I'm going to turn my heat up today. It's been cold and Oh, and the construction on the new barn addition starts ASAP. Okay, we're going to turn this guy up. As you can see, it's cramped in here right now because I got all this other crap, but we're going to work on this right here. And uh, let me get set up and we'll start working on it. Well, the lovely missus had a hip replaced last week, just about a week ago. But the day before she went in the hospital for her surgery, we cut all the pieces for the bed out of the plywood. There's two pieces here, a little over 30 inches wide. Uh, two tall pieces at 17 inches for the sides. And then two 60 inch some pieces for uh, the bottom and the top pieces. And then uh, there's corner brace pieces that go in let's see now this is a piece I had to build out of two pieces because I cut my plywood wrong and didn't cut them all in full pieces if you look at this bed design you got those two tall pieces you got the two front pieces these are identical pieces and then there's this one piece and this piece in higher here behind the platform which is this piece so it's basically just a big rectangle and this is the uh, article that we found online on another guy that built one and he added crown molding trim, nice trim to it. It's bookshelves. I'm not doing the bookshelves. I'm just going to put little curved shelves on either side. Okay, so what do we need to do today? We've got all the plywood cut. In the instructions it says to attach pieces to uh, this piece and the narrower piece and put them together to kind of like make your angles and I'm trying to decide if that's how I want to do it and I guess I do. It's all going to be awkward but what I'll do is I'll make those L-shaped pieces because this big piece here is going to be attached to the floor you know sticking up this way and the top narrow piece is going to have the top so we'll build those two first, and we're going to glue and screw those together, pocket screws, whatever. I'm going to paint this so I can uh, I can use uh, screws with a chamfer bit and drive the screws in deep, and then we'll just um, gum pucky up the holes. So that's all we got to worry about with those. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to get this set up to put together. This will be below the bed frame headboard. This part, the inside of the cabinet, will never ever be seen after the bed frame is in there. So, that's how this is attaching. So, I 
think I'm going to glue it. But at the same time, I think I'm just going to drive uh, screws in from the bottom right now and glue. It does show uh, dowels in it. But you know what? I can drill the screw holes for the dowels and put the dowels in after this is screwed together. So I'm going to clamp the corners. I'm going to glue it, clamp the corners. And uh, start this way. I can lay this down. Yeah. Move this guy a little farther. There we go. Put a bead of glue, flip it up, clamp it. I've got some special little corner clamps over here. All right, from this angle, you're not going to be able to see the back side right now, but I'll, I'll move the camera once I start screwing this together. Good old tight bond. Works every time. I forgot I had these little clamps. Alright, so there we got our first corner ready to screw. And I'm going to move you. Now, That screw. Boom. Um, I think maybe we should do the other end closest to you. I'm sorry, all my tools are on the back side here. So I can get this. Right in your way again, of course. Try to get this clamp. How the hell can I explore you in that? Oh, duh. Like that. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm looking down on the inside of this to line up that. Yeah, these little corner clamps, these are old, little, just aluminum little guys, but got a long ways to go here. Come on. Get up in there. There we go. Same thing with this guy. Now you can see there's a warp in this, but this will pull it in. A bow. Careful with these wild man drivers here. 
zippy tool, I call it, if you recall. So see this is sitting around the floor, it will be very forever. cabinets a couple of years ago. Remember those? New kitchen cabinets for the lake. Oh man. Great stuff. Alright, now I'm going to get my square. This should be square. Years ago, I cut square blocks for clamping, and that's just absolutely perfect. I'm just testing with this square that I made. It's a clamping block. And we will set this aside. I can take the clamps off now, my locating clamps. And then we have to edge band all these raw edges. Once we get the box built, we're going to put edge banding on here. Another three quarters of an inch. The same width as the plywood. Now this is good plywood. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plies. So that should be very, very, very strong. So here we go. Same process, we're just making the, the top part now.
So now I'm gonna rip the edge banding. Especially when you get down to those narrow pieces like this, be very conscious of your blade. Alright? We want you to have all your fingers when you get to the end of this project. Okay, so this is all the edge banding that needs to be put on all this wood. So I just want to get this cut out of the way for now. Um, I believe we'll actually attach it later after the box is built. That way you can get the ends to butt correctly together nice and tight. Okay, what else can we keep doing here? Actually, we could build a box. Now that's going to be the hard part. Somehow, we've got to stand these ends up and put the long pieces on there in the right orientation. This needs to go on here, like so. This is going to be fun to move into the bedroom, eh? I'm going to get one end screwed together first. I got pretty close though, look at that, I'm within three inches. So, that's the best thing. Boy, that's pretty square. I think therefore I am Socrates said or somebody said some great philosopher greater than I. We're going to put the screws up here. Our screw hole makers over here but I'm gonna put screws down through into that so I'm gonna glue this part up first I sure hope I can move this beast after I'm done this up. Finish putting the glue on it. Don't fall over on me now. on here but I should do shouldn't I? Yeah yeah that's the ticket. Alright, that'll hold that corner from slipping. Slip slide in away. I'm gonna do the bottom first and get that nice and square. And Keep in 
behind, you got to keep this sucker as square as you possibly can because when you get done with this, that front opening has to be perfectly square so that the bed frame fits in it correctly. Right? I say, boy! I guess I don't have any way of doing this other than putting a screw in it while I'm waiting here. So that's what we should do. I get one screw in it and she'll be all set. these a little deeper because I want these to be uh, reset. So I'm going to have to take those other ones out that I put in and drill them a little deeper. Because I want to be able to put gum pucky in the holes and paint over them. If it was getting stained, I'd be putting the screws in from a different angle, but well, that just sucked. What the hell happened there? So I'm going to take these out one at a time. Alright, well you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this on the other end, closest to you. And I don't know what I can do to square this up because I don't know how it can get any more square than having those pieces of plywood screwed into the center of it. Okay, I put you up on top of the garbage can. I hope you're not in too precarious of a position here. Ugh. Enough screws, yes we do. Okay, I'm gonna tilt this guy out. So I've got to flip this over somehow. Maybe I can get my grandson to come help me. I'm going to pull this in. Right here. And now that won't move until I clamp her down tight. That glue tacks up pretty fast. You'd be surprised how fast that glue. See, I just want this dry. I've got a scraper. I'll scrape it. So now this is the structural integrity of the whole top. 
All right, I'm gonna get take a little break. I'm gonna go see if I can find that uh, those dowels. I'm knocking it around. I know, but here's what we got. They're screwed in. I'll just have to patch these because again, if I was staining, I would have put in pocket screws from the top. This is structurally more sound, if you ask me, and. Uh, We'll be just filling those holes when we paint it. All right, I'm going to take a break. All right, so I've done the other end here. We got this flipped over. My daughter came and we flipped it sideways, you know, 180 degrees. So now I'm down to this corner. You can see I've, I've guided the, put the clamp on here to guide this corner. Now I haven't glued it yet. Okay, so with a little finagling, I got the box up on the sawhorses. Now what I've got to do, get my air nailer, my brad nailer, and my banding strips and go all the way around the perimeter. And then I need one on this piece down here. Down there I'm going to make like a little scroll headboard piece. That's what that uh, long piece down there is. Uh, I'm going to lay that out tonight at, at home in, in the kitchen. So let's get that air bread nailer ready and uh, start putting that on. And then we'll cut it off on the end. Right? Alright. So we got so much room here to work. Just put a bead of glue on here. This is poplar. Poplar is not free, very not free, and very, very, very stable and uh, doesn't shrink and contract and do a lot of that. So we're just bringing that guy right up flush like that. I gave it just a smidge larger than. plywood so that I got something to sand off. I'm just going to go back and forth along the edges of the sander until they're flush. So I purposefully made them a little wider. Just a 32nd of an inch. Because I don't want to get into my veneer either. Let's do that. 
I know it should be exactly 63 and a quarter. I'm going to have to clean off my miter saw here. This looks perfectly fine to me. Pencil width over 63 and a quarter. So we're going to cut it a little long and sneak up on it. I just need to skim that. I'll probably take too much. <laughs> 